came out in 88, so we met in what, 87 for the we first time? We met in 87, we met in May. So how many years is it? To, it's 35 years, oh, 30, 36 years since 36 we met. 36 years. Yeah, and I have to say, just having him here in my home is such a dream come true. Well, this house is a dream. It's a Thank beautiful house. Thank you for house. giving me my life. Oh, honey, I didn't give you your life. You would have found success without me. Let me tell you that. And I, I mean that with great respect. But both of us, yes, it was the right combination at we, the right we time. Were, we and were we've the been secret through a sauce. Lot. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, it's, we remained friends. It wasn't like the movie's over. And a lot of times you make a film with somebody and you never see them again. Mm -hmm. Even if you get along with them, great. Yeah. I mean, even, I don't happen too much in my movies, but I remember. Uh, yeah, that does happen. Where Did you, you anticipate that we'd become friends? No, not in the beginning, I didn't, because, um, but yeah, because we stayed friends and then we promoted the movie together. We saw everybody after it happened, then Divine died, so we went through that trauma together. Yeah. And then uh, and then the movie was a hit and then we got back together. But even then you were in all my other movies too, right. way Listening before to Hairspray talk. became a musical. Yeah. Right, you I, always root for everyone, all your friends to succeed. And I have to say, like you have been like my number one supporter, even though you didn't always believe in what I was doing. I, I did you know. not believe, like which thing? The bird <laughs> I don't know. thing? I, think I just shocked. don't want to see you have birds. Do you remember I'm on sorry. the set of Serial Mom that everyone was, like, including Suzanne <laughs> Summers, were like, you're doing it today. They were laughing that I was doing a talk show. I was like, I'm about to leave after no, this. No, I thought it was, but amazing to me, and that talk show, I remember once Ricky and I were trapped in an airport, <laughs> and every steward recognized me, and every African American recognized Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember that she had become, from her show, way more famous than I was at the time. And it was great. It was just to see the success that you had there. And you handled it well. You never handled success badly. That's because of you. I, you know, yeah. I, I don't think you remember sitting me down at the end of the filming of Hairspray. You don't remember. You pulled me aside and you said, you, you sat me down and said, I have some things I want to tell you. Your life is about to change. Does that need to ring a bell? Mm -hmm. Your life is about to change. I mean, it was very... I well, don't no, remember was I that confident knowing the movie would be a hit? I didn't you, know. You had a feeling and you said yeah. your life is about to change. I want you to remember these three things. Always stay humble. Always stay true to yourself. And if you're going to read and believe the good things people say about you, you have to read and believe the bad. Yeah. I always say read all the reviews. I don't trust people as though they never read the reviews. Mm -hmm. Read the good ones twice, the bad ones once, and put them all away and never think about them again because I built a career on bad reviews. Right. They couldn't help. Rex Hairspray Reed, right? was not one of them. Hairspray, yes. Rex Reed hated it. He's the only one that hated it, pretty much. Yeah. You had many backup careers. You would be like documentaries. You would be a talk show. You would do this. You were in movies. So I think that's very important. To, nothing's going to last. It's that not going to be the same. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I mean, as, do you remember between Hairspray and Crybaby, I gained a lot of weight and you were worried about me after Divine died? Well, I was remember? worried. That's the thing today. Even you look at Lizzo and you think it's great, but Lizzo did exactly what Divine did, like be big and, you know. But I guess I was concerned about that, too. And then, of course, what the Inquirer and they always did was in the movie, you're supposed to be eight months pregnant. Right. So they would always take that picture of you in character and say, look how much weight she's getting. <laughs> Not saying that it was a fake I was. Stomach. I was a They cool would always use though. that in the Inquirer. Yeah. yeah look yeah. how fat she is. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but um, I remember <laughs> making Cry Baby, and I remember, and you're great in that movie. You bring a great warmth to that character, yeah. too. And you always great. You were you were great working with other people. You weren't the star of this movie, mm -hmm. and you were the last one. And right. that was tough. We had Johnny Depp. It wasn't anybody. No, no, really it was out. tough. It was and, tough. But it also <laughs> wasn't another woman that was competing. You couldn't have played Cry Baby. Right, right, I guess right, you right. Could have today. <laughs> that know. was an amazing experience. That also, I mean, it carried but over. But see, that movie was not a success. Mm -hmm. Same way the Broadway musical they made of Cry Baby, which I think they did a great job. It was oh, amazing. It was big I saw it in La Jolla yeah, and yeah, on Broadway. It yeah. was great. So you never know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Why do you think Hairspray has just like stuck around? Because your, your portrayal of Tracy and that character stands for every outsider. And everybody can identify with it. Because everybody wasn't around during that kind of music mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. But I think the right people win in that movie. That's why. And the right people win in all my movies. That's true. I, I have to say, I think it made me a better talk show host. Or I think having played that role and having people like me and root for me, and I stood for the underdog, I think in coming out as a 24-year-old talk show host, they were able to kind of take me in more because they knew me from that role. 
Okay. And also, remember, we would have dirty vocabulary lessons and oh, everything yes. on the oh, school. Yes. Where we, I would tell these children the most hideous terms. But you used some of them. You had guests that had those we, diseases. Yeah, we did. You taught me. Too. You taught me so much. You were definitely <laughs> like the amazing springboard springboard that I needed to go on to my other but then tasks. You made. I think you learned about showbiz pretty quickly too. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you had other parts, you got other things, and saw how hard it was to, to be and it was famous different. for this one yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. And like, uh, there's not that many other roles. That, you know, were you ever in another musical? Mm. No, but Hairspray wasn't a musical, it was a dance movie. You don't even call it a movie. musical, because I didn't sing. Yeah, but um, you can sing. Yeah, I danced in Mrs. Winterbourne. Do you remember that that's one? Right, that's right, With Shirley MacLaine. I loved I doing Last Exit dance. to Brooklyn. You love that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was most people don't know she made that. <laughs> I like, gave birth movie. in that one too. Yeah. I gave birth oh, did on I film tell you? three times before I ended up I having I think children. I told you the story. This girl came up to me and I was at Sweetbriar College giving a, my spoken word show. She said, I used to really hate you. I said, why? She said, I was the baby Ricky Lake gave birth to in the car and cry baby. My parents didn't ask me if I wanted to be in that movie. <laughs> I thought, oh, wow, that's a new one. She said, oh. but I love you now. Oh, that is so She was very funny. nice about it, but I never told that Those was parents were very, very kind to let, I mean, how old was that baby? When we I did don't know. That? How about the one where Kathleen Turner sneezes in the baby's right, face? Right. We shot <laughs> snot in the baby's face from a straw. That was our good friend. The baby doesn't matter. The worst is the little baby that was in Desperate Living that was crying, and I put back in the refrigerator for a second take. She said, I don't remember it. She's felt friendly with her now. She's like 40 years old. And I said, it's not like you only have sex in refrigerators now or anything. She said, no, I don't remember oh it. But people said, how could you have done that? Like, ah, but well, we had to get the shot. You know? But the kid was fine. And the All the kids, kids that grew up with us are fine. They're fine. Yeah. Wasn't Brooke in the movie Brooke too? Brooke was in the movie. They were, I was naked in the movie. They were all, Divine was their aunt. It's we all for were art. a good group to grow up around. Yeah, no, you know, absolutely. The society then would have taken their children away from their parents if they were on the set. Yeah. All the kids turned out fine. All the, the, the Corny Collins kids. I mean, they all turned out to be great. Yeah people, right? Yeah. It was, I mean, I'm in touch with not all of them, but Josh Charles went on to be a big star, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think that we were a bad family, an alternative family, no. definitely. But you didn't let me see the movies until I didn't let after. you see uh, Pink Flamingos, which I think was, I didn't let Tab Hunter see it before we made Polyester. In a way, you weren't 18, were you? I oh, was 18. Okay, I, I guess 18. you were maybe, yeah. but, but not you were right very, away. You were very protective yeah, of me. I didn't me want her you... to suddenly see Pink Flamingos right when we get to the set. Then when, when we first started, I mean, what I remember, I mean, I remember the cicadas. I remember the first day of shooting was at the, the television station, the, our fake yeah. television station. I had to do an outdoor scene and the cicadas were there yeah, that, that was year. The, tell what people don't know. They're eight, cicadas 26 are, year locusts, what are they They're called? every 17 years. 17 year they're, they're about that big. But they were flying they into the fly lenses when we were They hit you in the shoot. face yeah. and you're stepping and you're crunching everywhere. It was absolutely disgusting. But you don't see them in the movie. Once in a while, you can see one whiz by. Really? Yeah, yeah. I have not been able to see that. And I've, been, I've seen the movie a lot this year because of the 35 year yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Um, which is, it's such a trip. Like, I, like. But so the what, scenes that were cut, there was a whole subplot oh, I know Nadine cut. where the black girl was prejudiced against whites too. Right. But it went too far away from the main story. And it, there was a real girl on Buddy Dean named Pixie who the rumor was when she quit the show was because she had cockroaches in her hair that fed on the hairspray and they killed her. Because she didn't wash her hair. Yeah, that right. was not true. But okay. Dean had to come on and say this is not true. It became a teenage rumor. But in the movie, Ricky, his character, got roaches in her hair. So we put real roaches in it. I don't know why she was upset, but we did. I, I don't know why. And yeah, they were then Baltimore. Then when it shot, then bugs. Bob Shea said, what is this, a Benwell film? You can't have it. What is this? Which, in a way, <laughs> it was right. But then she blamed me about her hair. I that, thought it was testing. Here, you did testing, and it made Tracy less likable. All the other women that had hair hair teased aren't bald. You just had bad. <laughs> Bad <laughs> hair jeans from your bald grandmother. I think so, you said, be glad you don't have to set your hair on fire like yeah, Mink. Yeah, big, well, Mink didn't set her hair on fire. <laughs> Melanie Griffith did later in the one movie I made, but it was fake. But um, to me, the, I thought you overreacted with the roaches. But in Desperate Living, <laughs> Liz Renee is nude while real roaches crawl over her ass. <laughs> and she, went, and she, she didn't complain. Didn't she was a professional. She was a pro. <laughs> <laughs> she I would understood do it all again. surrealism. 
when you didn't at your <laughs> tender age. But anyway, it was correct to cut that scene up. But they were doing the roach dance mm -hmm. at the same time. Oh, and there was a scene also when I break into Amber's house. And said, go, read her, yes. And I dye said, my hair. And looks like a real delinquent. She breaks into her house. She reads her diary and cuts it out. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? And then I, I peroxide my hair in her You in bleach her, sink. her hair in the Because <laughs> yeah. that's when the, it changes over and my hair is different. Yeah, and yeah. there's no reason now in the plot. It just happens. It's exactly. Yeah, just, huh? It works. But then it says that you've gone, Joe. And right, but, right, uh, right. You fixed yeah, it. Yeah, I forgot that part. <laughs> when she breaks into her, rips up her diary. When we were filming, <laughs> the, I think it was like an eight-week shoot, when did you know that it was going to be something special? I never want to count my tickets before they're hatched. So honestly, you didn't? I didn't know what was going to happen with it. It felt good. It felt when I saw the dailies, just all the dancing looked so authentic, and I felt the joy from the set. But I've had movies that everybody really had a great time making that were not a hit at the box office mm -hmm. at all. It was my first movie that was shot on 35 millimeter. It was the first movie where we had unions, you know, anything. Right. So it was the first Hollywood movie I ever made, certainly. So there was a lot riding on it. I knew that much. And wasn't the budget like 2.7? 2.7 million dollars. It yeah. was two or three, we went over, we got more. But today, 2.7 would be five, maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah, which is still cheap for a musical period movie, because period's horrible, really horrible, all the costumes and everything. Yeah. And then, of course, the hairdresser that did all the insane hairdressers, as Ricky tells the story, usually the hairdresser is the sweet mother <laughs> figure on it. Chris Mason was a power dyke, I mean, you know, <laughs> and proud of it. And she was scary. The thickest Baltimore accent. Yeah, she, she was great, though. She could do those hairdos, because she did them for real, yep. in real life. But she could do uh, 10 of them in a day, right? And she was something. But she, everybody liked her. She was great. Yeah. And Van. Yeah, Van. and Van, who did the costumes and makeup, everything for the movie. Yes. The red dress that Divine Morrison and Pink Van. Flamingos on the cover of Vanity Fair. Balenciaga did it. Isabel really? Hubert wore it to the Met Bowl. Wow. The exact same dress. So. Van really, um, when he died, he got these amazing ob obituaries in the New York Times and, and Women's Wear Daily and everything. He didn't know that. You know, he was amazed. His family th thought they were like porn movies. It worked. So yeah, they didn't get I have it, pictures you know? of him applying the makeup, the eyeliner for me, yeah. and he would hold his hand like this. Yeah. You know, yeah. because he had polio as a kid. He had like something. something he had like, something yeah. going on, but yeah. he was he was incredibly talented. I, well, a great success to Van and Vincent Perenia, who did all the sets of the movies. How's How he looked. doing? Is he coming it's out? Fun. He lives in Portugal. And yeah. he's still with Dolores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're it's, coming out next. I don't know if they're coming because it's so far. I don't know. But Brooke's coming. Brooke's coming. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. It'd be like a high school reunion. It's gonna be yeah. so yeah. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's 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 just. But was it hard for you in the beginning when they had the musical and it was a hit? It was a little hard for you, right? Oh yeah, it was hard. I yeah. remember saying I wanted a chance to audition, and you said, "You're too old and you're not fat." <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I was doing a talk show, so there was that too. That. <laughs> you know, it becomes something easier to swallow. Obviously, I'm in my 50s now, yeah. but I look back on it, the fact that it continues. It's, and it's, even that actor, she won the Tony for it. I mean, you oh, know, Marissa it was success. incredible. Yeah. Marissa, who yeah. became a friend. Yeah. Maddie Balio, who's so talented. And yeah. Nikki Bond. They're all, um, Carly Gibson was yeah. just here at my house. They're amazing. And a it's rainbow just... of Tracy's. The weirdest thing that ever happens to me, I'll be in <laughs> Paris in an airport, and somebody will run over and say, we're from Baltimore, too. <laughs> like I'm supposed to say, thank God. <laughs> I was so terrified. It's so odd. Well, thank you. Nice to see you. But they act like they're. Let's do <laughs> down the ocean horn. No, they, I, I hate it when actresses try to do Baltimore accents <laughs> in my movie. Because I used to have them for real and I couldn't get rid of them. I don't want someone to do a good Baltimore accent in my movie. The Academy is amazing, like giving me this. Uh, whole show about not my photo work. It's all about stuff from the movies and it's everything. They've been working on for four years. So they've got Ricky's Road Struggle. They've got stuff I didn't even know where they found and it. And did they get it. it from Wesleyan? Did they got they it from everywhere. They went everywhere. all over. They went Jeff Gordon. People gave him stuff from everywhere. Wow. It's going to be pretty amazing. And then the star on Hollywood Boulevard is, you know, and Hairspray got picked this year as the Natural Registry is one of the great Unbelievable. American films. Unbelievable. Which so, um, along with Pink Flamingos did last year. How could that be? How could that be? <laughs> Pink Flamingos played on Turner Classics. How could that be? The singing asshole was on Turner Classic. What a family <laughs> say with Eric. What's that, Mom? Nothing. <laughs> That's a happy anus. What do they say to their children when they're watching it? You're having quite the year. Yeah. It's not going to get much better than this. I've had a good year.
And busier than ever, right? I am busier than ever, yeah, which is good. And, and I think, um, I always say, if I drop dead, I hope it's on stage, you can do selfies, but if you dig me up for sex, oral only. <laughs>